What's up, everyone? This is Pastor Sam. This is Danny. And together we're exploring relationships. Relationships. That's Thank you, right. jump, bro. I say that part. Oh, really? Thank you. Yeah. It. I know well, you want to be like me and all, but come on. That's now. the goal. That's the goal <laughs> <laughs> to be like you. Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome back to our podcast. Yeah, thank you for uh for just you know hanging with us, man. Yeah. Like it's, it's it's like if you've made it to this one, I want to let you know you have made it. You have that's completed. Right. Unless you're watching this, the first one. <laughs> There's a couple then more you want to go check gotta out. Go back. You gotta go back. Can can jump to the end of the line. Yeah, but I mean, it's been a it's been a a, a, a wide range of topics and discussions. I want to mm-hmm. think. I mean, I forget about our first one, which was an intro, kind of introducing our series and stuff. And then we talked about communication and all all this on the umbrella of how do we improve our relationships, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, w- that's the main focus for us, right? Well, we felt like that God was calling us to invest in relationships for about eight weeks. And so uh, when it comes to the podcast, it's some things that we cannot do in the sermon. Not everything yeah. can be shared in the sermon. So we we kind of parse it out between yeah. the Bible study, the, the podcast, and then the sermons uh, to give a concise yeah. uh, and part of that was the first week was communication, how we communicate the importance of active listening i think you're yeah active listening versus like the tone we mm-hmm. use and things and then we talked about technology which is like you know that's a far-reaching one like technology yeah. is always changing and you know we try to do our best yeah yeah <laughs> i had it. a conversation today with someone who the person was telling me like your sermon technology still hunts me <laughs> uh, you know i was like oh i'm sorry yeah the person was like you know what's funny that you start this the the that sermon talking about the church app you gotta download the church app and you gotta spend some time in the church <laughs> app and then you go and spank us on technology how do you do that and i was like oh sorry ignore everything i'm saying now <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then we where we didn't have the expertise we kind of we reached out to those when it comes to like the parenting you know mm-hmm. we had some, uh, counselors over here that works yeah. uh, at the church here at Delaware well, partners with Delaware Christian Church yeah. and, and we thought like on when topics such as trauma par- topics yeah. such as you know parenting parenting marriage uh, relationship um, let's bring in the experts who kind of they deal with that somewhat on a on a day to day basis so they can share their insights and their wealth of knowledge with us and hopefully uh you've, you've listened to those sessions and those three those three sessions specifically and um you're able to get some things from it if it even is some encouragement or some affirmations and things that you're doing i think we can all be can learn from each and every episode that we have and so i think it's a great practice right i think what we did here is something to be modeled to the, you know we're trying to model to those around us is that like when you don't know yeah, yeah. Don't, uh, don't just wing it. Just go get some help, right? And I think there's a pride that comes to the the heart of men that keeps us from asking help when when you need help. So like you know, in, at home doing some. Uh, You're talking to the wrong guy. Oh yeah, that's I'm right. <laughs> I don't do nothing at home either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always calling. <laughs> I'm like, I know very well there what I can and can't, can't do. do. Yeah, well, and, and I think that's it right there. You know, there are some areas of our lives that we know we need help, and there are some others that we think we don't need help, but it's actually those that we need, we need the help, help yeah. the most. So, And I think when it comes to relationship, um, there is no expert. There is no expert in parenting. There is no expert in marriage. There was, If there was like a, a book with the, the secret of, maintaining all your relationships well then it would have been called the bible yeah so there's <laughs> only one <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say like there is one <laughs> yeah there, but yeah you know outside know of mean. god's word there is none so there's no no expert so it's, it's important to there's to no get. singular voice to mm. say this is how you do it that's right? that's good i like you know, that i think there's that's no singular voice yeah it's a, it's a plurality of of ideas and and and, and different things that folks have tried Trial and error. That's what it kind of comes down to when it thinks about that, right? Like in one way or another, yeah. And I, and I think, but there are people who can t- help you try better. Yes. Or try good. Try and fa- failing. There is some lo- a lot of learning there. But why would you, if there's someone who can help you try good, why would you just say, like, forget it, I'll try it, and then... Yeah, I mean, it comes back to what you lottery said. Lottery, kind of. What you came back to say is pride, right? Mm-hmm. Pride holds us back from receiving um counsel wise counsel mm-hmm. and things like that mm-hmm. and areas of that like you know and you know 
there's definitely things that you know I don't know anything about how to do it. Sure. And you're right. There are some of those areas where I probably need to be honest with myself and say, "Hey, you need to seek help in this." Yeah, I mean, you know, the you, you have heard many of my, my stories about trying to do housework, <laughs> right? Like you, he's you like, know, "I'll get it when done." When we first moved <laughs> in, we we're like, "Oh, we need a new dishwasher." We got the dishwasher, and then I was like, "I can't install these." And then there we go. We have a flaw downstairs. Now you're, now you're dealing with a basement. <laughs> That's right. And so, and then it's like, oh man, I knew I can't. I know I can't do this. <laughs> I, and I know history tells me like you are not detail oriented enough to be able to do such a thing. But I'm doing it. And then, then I'm buckets downstairs and praying that the ceiling won't fall because water is everywhere. So, so a lot of us, when it comes to the parts that matters most in life how we deal with our spouse, how we deal with our kids, how we deal with our coworkers, how we deal with our neighbors, how we deal with strangers, and then how we deal with our own selves, right? Because we don't only relate with others, we relate with self too, uh, that we need some help. We, we are like, nah, I'm just gonna wing it. And, you know, and a lot of us are with their basement flooded because <laughs> they thought they're watching a YouTube video or listening to a coach or, only would would bring the solution that they need and when in reality is a plurality of things god's word coming first god biblical teachings coming first and then yeah. asking for help from others that will guide guide you through the solutions that you're looking for in your in your relationship so yeah we need to be intentional about our relationships and yeah. sometimes we not we take people for granted uh, all the time oh, if it yeah. is in a workplace at home we are always taking people for granted right yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest, that's the biggest traps we fall into, right? People in our relationships come into focus when we need them, when we need mm. that person or we need that talent that that person has or we need. But I, I think our, our goal in this whole series, whether you've been listening to the podcast or sermons or the Bible study, is, is to show that a thriving relationship is a relationship that one starts with God and then mm. overflows from you to all the other parts of your life, right? And that sounds very easy, just said it there, but how do you bring that all together, hopefully putting all these pieces, these mm-hmm, things we've mm-hmm, talking about, mm-hmm, standing mm-hmm. up, some things in your life that wasn't there before, taking down some things that should have been taken away, and and hopefully in the end result, when you get through this whole series, your relationship has moved the dial a little bit more. Mm-hmm. We're not saying this is going to solve all your yeah, problems. That, that exa- <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, this is a, is a f- food for thought yes. kind of deal is a, is a conversation started is assessment started is probably yeah. the first second the third question on the on, on a questionnaire of 15 20 questions yeah. uh, about how to live a well-rounded relation relational life and so uh, by no means what we are doing here is the end of it all yeah. or, or you know it all it is just the beginning of a journey that I, that I, we believe that God is calling us to continue to do that and I think uh, throughout our you know, our life as the, uh, in, uh, here at DCC, as we continue to minister here, we'll continue to focus on on the relational aspect of who we are because that's what kind of the vision that we have, right? Yep. The vision that we have is to, you know, come alongside individuals to help them understand God's calling for their lives, but not by uh, uh, just, I like to say, the fly by the city of your pants, but really understanding what who God is, who we are, what God purpose us to do. And, and we believe that in that aspect, Jesus didn't come just to save the spiritual, the, the soul. He came to save the whole of the individual, the mental, the, the emotional, the physical. So we kind of have this idea that God wants to deal with us holistically. He loves us holistically. So we need to care for those, for every aspect of who we are. So I know, I'm sure that as we continue to develop our, continue to minister here, we'll continue to f- yeah. keep doing that same note family family relationship relationship family family relationship relationship and then yeah. how the bible uh, yeah. touched the, all of that yeah i think one of the things when you're saying that i think about the foundation right mm. like we're trying to have you assess your foundation are there cracks in your foundation That's that right. needs to be filled mm-hmm. you know because you can't if your relationship you want to build on a strong foundation so that way it stands up it holds up through the test of time because relationships in itself are going to be um, tried, right? Because sure. We're, yeah. we're we're human beings, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, so, how do you how does how does your foundation hold up on that? So I think I think a hope is that you know we help 
help kind of start you thinking about that? I mean, and, and I, like even think about last two weeks uh, or a few weeks back, uh, sermon, patience and kindness, right? Uh, like for you to be patient, I mean, the, 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 we always joke about this at the church. Like if you pray for God for patience, what well, he's going to get you. <laughs> he's going to give you some the ways to be patient. This is so, <laughs> I, so be assured that you're going to be meeting frustrating people. Your mm-hmm. kids going to turn frustrating for that week or for, you know. Or, so like, you know, so you can't be patient uh, unless you meet difficult people, people who frustrate the heck out of you, that stresses you out. And there's a list of it. So, you know, that's how it works. So yeah. that's how it goes. Like, you know, the, 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 the knowledge of, yeah. of th- all that we're talking about is things that we're dealing with people every yeah. day. It's just that we need to understand, okay, when my spouse is being difficult, stubborn, well, I need to be patient and I need to yeah. be kind. I need to extend that because patient and kindness that God extended to us turns us into repentance. The kindness and the patience we promote to someone ought to get them the time to turn it around and to change. Yeah. I think of it like a muscle. Like, you know, like, you know, and... I, <laughs> and Talking about <laughs> muscles. Dang, boy. Yeah, look at that's those right. Arms. It's like that relationship muscle. Like, you know, say when you go to the gym, right? You know, mm-hmm. the more and more you work out, the stronger and stronger you get, right? Mm-hmm. You have to, like, you have to build what this thing called muscle memory, in a sense. Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, you know, thinking of with your patient stuff, right? If I'm flexing that, if I don't have ways where I'm learning how to be patient... My patient is never going to grow. My level yeah. of patient is never going to increase. So that way I can be more kind to the people around me and things like that. So I think, you know, you got to flex that muscle. You got to learn to build that muscle. And I think once we do that and we see that, hopefully we can see some of that playing out in our lives mm-hmm. and seeing where we are stronger in this area because we've kind of worked on that muscle. So. Well, and, and and let's finish today. Today we're finishing talking about... Uh, in Something that resonates <laughs> with all of us. Uh, can you spell it out to us what we're talking about? We're talking about really, I mean, life balance when it comes mm-hmm. to our business life, when it comes to our schedules, and how does relationships fit into that, right? You know, I, I feel like, just to tee it up, a lot of times we, 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 we try to look at things of like, oh, we'll, we'll fit it in, right? But I think the oh, idea yeah, we'll, is yeah. that we want to be more intentional with, with how we... Um, do our schedules, how we look at when we do our work and our business time, and just just talking about life balance and when it comes to relationships. And, and I think that the lack of life balance has led us to um, to the lack of honoring God and and the lack of well being within our entire family because we're just so strained with everything. And I think from all the people should be talking about this. I think probably me and you are probably <laughs> the worst. We should never be talking about. Uh, balance of life and business, uh, you know, uh, the busyness of life business, and yeah. schedule and, and you know, because, you know, we, we both know that, that it is probably, I would say this is probably one of my, the, the weakest, one of my weakest link is just the fact that I am not, I am not, I just, what you said earlier is true, like, I, I can fit it in and we'll yeah. get it done. And, you know, this idea of getting it done at all yeah. costs kind of has cost me, my family, um, and my relationship some... Some, some strife, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, and I think you're right. I think, like, you know, we are probably the last people to talk about this because we don't have great boundaries in that standpoint, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, one, because I, th- I think, like, you know, not want to be on a high horse, but I feel like... You know, when you make yourself available all the time, mm-hmm. um, that can be straining on, on the relationship that matters the most, right? So I think everyone, not only you and I, but I think people who are listening to this too, the, the, the struggle to balance, you know, work commitments and mm-hmm. personal relationship mm-hmm. is not a it's not a unforeseen challenge. It's a common challenge. It's a common thing that we're all wrestling with every day right it's elusive right it feels elusive like it feels like it's something feels like you're never gonna catch up you're mm-hmm. never gonna you're never gonna catch yeah. up to the rabbit the rabbit's always chasing yeah. a different hole like it's always going to different places. but it doesn't have to be that way no and and so this idea of like quantity of time versus quality of time mm-hmm. is 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 something that you know i you know when, when we're in those moments right are we intentional and the word that you're probably going to hear a lot if you do a word count 
behavior from me is going to be intentional mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it all starts with the intentions, right? If the intention is just to get things done. Can, can you define for me intention? Well, when, because I like to use that uh, word too. Intentionality? Uh, <laughs> intentionality. Let's, let's uh, Google it. You know, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, because I think sometimes we, uh, I, I think sometimes we just need to, define words yeah because uh we we don't we don't always like we don't always know what we're talking about do you know <laughs> what i'm saying like we use words that we we have no idea what those words are we're just using words right so um intentionality uh in the oxford dictionary god is that you <laughs> no, that's not God. <laughs> Too soft. God would come like boom. <laughs> intentional. The quality of mental states that consists in their being directed toward some object or state of affairs. Oh. Dumb that down for me. <laughs> 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 no, no. I'm, I, I think I, I saw I saw the same thing too. S say it back again, Nick. So that was the philosophy, but the actual. Definition as a noun is the fact of being deliberate or purpose. Pur I like that. Pur uh, yeah, I think I think that's what we say when we mean intentionality. That uh, uh, we're deliberate and we're deliberate very purposeful, purposeful on what we want. On yeah. What you want to do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's what I think that's. But then you talk about intentionality. Some some things come to mind, like right clarity in your purpose mindful living you have to be spiritual aligned uh, with god um you got a plan uh, you gotta show some resilience and dependability i think uh, you gotta have flexibility words. too flexibility <laughs> too so like so intentionality is not just like a word you throw out there it's actually a it, it's actually work it is yeah it's yeah. and i think that's and i so the, the thing is like one of the things I, that i keep thinking of is like can you be intentional about too many things? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you know, what, what gets cut, what doesn't get cut, right? Well, you can't serve two gods. You can't. So, I, and I'm not either quoting Jesus to say serve God or whatever. No, I'm just saying, like, we don't have the capacity to do many things well. We have the capacity to do some few things well. And I think we need to start to discern in our lives what are those few things that you're going to be deliberate on mm -hmm. purposeful on and i i don't as we have been kind of preaching here nothing more than relationships better. yeah and and that's where that's where i think of like you know we're, we're so quick to schedule work meetings mm -hmm. work things meet with this person but do we schedule those time too as well we think of our relationship investing in the relationship that's important to us one the most important one is you and you and god right sure you know i that has to be the first relationship that you have to be intentional about, right? Being intentional and spending time with God, learning mm -hmm. about, because then God's going to reveal something to us in our life, right? The things that needs to be come under alignment to him. And, uh, and then you go like, okay, if you're married, then your spouse, intentional about that, if mm -hmm. you have kids there. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then, you know, it's, the, it's those people close to you. How are you, how are you intentional in those relationships for when... <coughs> <coughs> I oftentimes thinks about like think about like uh, am I intentional with, with my relationships, or am I only thinking about relationship when it serves my purpose mm. and when it serves my need, right? Sure. Like let's yeah. say I have a friend that that does something really well. Uh, is the only time I'm reaching out to that friend when I need something, mm -hmm. or is, am I reaching out just because I don't need anything, just want to check in, see sure. how you're doing? And I think that's where I mean by the intentionality because. I would say we all kind of connect with people, but we connect with people when we need them, when we want something. Well, we are selfish, right? Yeah. And I think that's... I was the, being nice to ourselves. The, the pro <laughs> well, the, I think that's the problem there. Right. I think we, we are too <laughs> selfish. We, we see people as... And, and that's one of the problems, one of the biggest thing I have learned of late throughout this, this, this series on relationship then is the fact that we have found ways to dehumanize the individuals for our own well-being so all these things that we have talked on a sunday morning you know i go back to self-control right because self-control allows us to uh, it, it it gets us into some uh tricky situations just because 
we are not able to control our emotions, so we are manipulated by our lack of self-control. And a lack of self-control, for example, in a sexuality aspect of things, leads people to porn <laughs> addiction, right? But what porn addiction does is a porn uh, uh, makes a guy look at a girl as she's been nothing more, nothing less than a object. Like you objectify the individual, right? Yeah. But but it, they it do the same thing with uh, they sp with a spouse with any other addiction like alcoholism, right? You're looking at the individual, the hurt and the you you causing there. You no longer see as that person as individual, but they're either there to support you in your addiction or not to support you in your addiction. And I think sir, a means to an end for me, not necessarily for you. It's a means to an end for for what I need and mm -hmm. what, what my needs are. And I'm totally disregarding your needs and everything in it. And I think that's the biggest problem we have is that it has been easy, especially in the 21st century. And technology has helped us do that uh, to dehumanize individual uh, and to see them as just object that is here for my good. But I am afraid that we do the same thing we got, that we look at God and it's like, you know what? I'm with you just as long as I got the blessings. I'm j with you I'm just as long as I get the cookie. I'm just with you just as long as my checking account is okay. okay. Uh, I'm just with you until my checking account is good, right? Uh, if you, if you, if that, uh, once God lacks <laughs> on his ability to provide for me what I want from him, therefore I'll no longer uh, am calling God God or the divine because he didn't do for me what I, I always so I think this dehumanization um, taking it away the true being of the individual for your own good has been a problem that I have found within this, this uh, context of relationship we do that all the time <coughs> yeah we're users man we're, we're users and, and we abuse people we mm -hmm. use them and we abuse them to to get or desires and the things that we want done. There is a song that says, Someone wants to use you. Someone <coughs> wants to abuse, to be abused by you, or something like I that. Don't, don't Do you know that, that song? I, I, I know the, the know melody. I don't know that song. I don't know that's the lyrics. Uh, yeah, it is. That's the lyrics? Yes. Oh. Uh, I don't remember the name of the song. <laughs> um, but no. But yeah, so I, I think so. So okay, we we all know this, right? We all know this about ourselves. What are we? How do we fix it then? How do we? How do we start that process of changing our oh, behavior? Oh, it's called sweet dreams. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, I don't think it's called. <laughs> it's uh, it's called sweet dreams. <laughs> yeah, but it's not amusing. Are you? It is here. I'll show you. I'll show you. Nick might have to edit this here apart into. Oh, yeah. Learn something, <laughs> learn something new today, and then don't, uh, but yeah, that's that is so true. But it is true, it is. and and I think that's how we live life: is either using people or abusing people, or being used by people and be abused by people, and that's now what God wanted for us. Yeah. Uh, so sweet dreams are not made out of these. <laughs> so yeah, so um, so let's talk about how do we think about this intentionality now? Uh, like you know, strong relationship are built on a foundation of trust, love, and intentional effort, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there are several key things that we can think of that we can talk about, whether it's a familiar relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, mm -hmm. whether it's a, a friendship, you know, to, to help us to kind of start thinking that way. And, and some of these we've kind of already covered a little bit, I feel like, on some of the topics we've talked about, like like communication, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing of for sure. We have to have open, honest Respectful communication is the heart of any strong relationship. How do you be a good listener? How do you express your thoughts and your feelings in a way that helps us address issues by not, you know, attacking the person? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we covered about that, you know, but, and then trust. Trust is the glue, I feel like. Yeah. So to talk to me about what, 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 what role does trust play in a relationship when we want to be intentional? Uh, dude, I, 
Well, I, I, I would say uh, trust is the paved road for well for a, for a well-rounded relationship with someone, right? Mm-hmm. So I think what role does it play? I think is the most important. I, I would say some people would say communication. I would say for me, uh, that might be a personal thing, and I'm trying to think biblically. For me, the most important aspect of a relationship is trust, second respect, mm-hmm. right? So when being intentional about trusting someone, and, and, and I, I have this theory with me, like, I don't know if you agree with that or not, maybe I should have, you know, we can talk about it. I, I don't believe trust is something that you gain, it is something that is given to you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, th- th- there is not much we can do to gain trust, in my personal opinion, because I do not know exactly, necessarily, when I'm interacting with someone, I, especially the first time, second time, or even for a month or a year, like, I do not know exactly well, what, it, what it makes them feel trust. Yeah, so I'll, I'll play the devil's advocate on that one, okay. just have the conversation. Like, mm-hmm. I think someone would say, well, I disagree with you, because if I met someone for the first time, they have to show me over, they have to show me that they're trustworthy. You always hear that, right? Like, what does that mean? Well, you know, that let's say they said they were going to do something and they did it, right? So you're saying you're giving that trust up front. You're, you, I and think and people, then, okay. Uh, that's what I think. And I, because, like, you can't, because, okay, the, 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 what for me trust is, trust for me is this, is reliability, honesty, integrity, and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. I'll say those four words. I, was, I thought I was five. But this four. So uh, I'll repeat them again. They are reliability, honesty, integrity, and vulnerability. I think those things is what composes trust. Mm-hmm. So I think being intentional, con- you know, consistently being um, there for people, that's what reliability is all about, right? Being truthful, being transparent. I, I mean, this is something you hear me say all the time. Like, I, uh, we need to be open. We need to be transparent. We, we can't be hiding. I talk about secrets in the in, in, in service at one point, right? The other thing is integrity. That's upholding to your, sp- to your moral value, right? Like, the, the moral value, the upholding to the moral ethical value standards that you have for yourself. And then b- b- vulnerability is being open to share with the individual the thoughts, the feeling without the f- Thoughts and the feelings without uh, being judged by the individual or the fear of being judged by that individual, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, that's what trust is. But I would say without trust, those words, there is no relationship. But we have relationship with people all the time. That you get, so, you know, you get, got a relationship with people all the time. So they give you some level of trust as you meet them, right? And then what, what they do is, what you do is you can either increase that Mm-hmm. By a lot, they by the, what they see, they give you more trust, or they take the trust away from you. A trust is not something I can gain; it's something that you give. That's my so, theory. So, when, so you, when when you're saying that, it, it brings me those things that you're talking about, brings me to this word that's called character, right? Yes, yes. It, it's it's a character, and mm-hmm. um, you know, th- this is a quote from a financial side. Um, John Pierre Morgan said this. He says, "The first thing is character." Before money or property or anything else, money cannot buy. Sure. Right. So that's that's a business quote, like you know, from that. That's standpoint. a good quote. Um, but when you say those things, it, it it reminds me of like that is a person's character, mm-hmm. meaning that they're reliable, their 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 integrity, they they have, you know, they they're dependable, things like that. Vulner- vulnerable, so vulnerable, integrity, like, things like that. Um, those are things about you where you know. Most of the time, is unchanging, right? It shouldn't, sure. it shouldn't be, right? But yeah, that should um, be something you are. That's who you are. That's that's innate in you. Things mm-hmm. like that. So you're saying if trust is tied to that, then I can see your point. Well, then that's given, right? Mm-hmm. You're either trustworthy or you're not. Yeah. You're either a character person or you're not, right? That's right. There's no now, one if, side. Will you freeway. trust a thief? If someone, <clears throat> if, if you someone is uh, say, I mean, I'll know, say no. I'll just say no. No, no, you <laughs> won't. Did, 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 did you trust a cheater? No. No, but, you won't. Like, do so, you but, do, do, someone who manipulates people and you know that? Well, do you trust that person? No. No. Like trust. Ha- for, that's why. I, that's what I'm saying. Like trust is is it paves the way because it's like 
piggyback on what you're saying, it's your character. And, and it's something that you extend to someone because you have met that person and you say, oh, there's some level of reliability there. There's some level of honesty there. There's some level of integrity there. And there's some level of vulnerability. I think I can extend yeah. my reach to that individual. So you're saying it's not necessarily that I, that I distrust you. It's just that show me the ways over time from meeting you where I can distrust you. Meaning that you don't have trust. Like, <coughs> so you, I mean, I'm just coming well, back because to Because trust, <coughs> trust is that you believe that someone, mm -hmm. that someone is reliable, Liable. is yeah. honest, yep. is integral, and is yeah. vulnerable. I that is it. the I belief that, yeah. of that. Like, I, I, I could buy that's that. That's what trust yeah, is. I could, well, in my No, no, no. I, I, I can see that side of it, but I would say most of the, most of the ideas are there. Someone says, no, no, no. The proof is in the pudding. Right? Sure. You know, you don't get my trust until you show me you can a want do this, b step in here. Well, you, you don't trust things. that person. You don't trust, right? Yeah. So, you, so then, so, so then, yeah, for you to trust that person, th you gotta see these things. Are yeah. you reliable? Are you honest? Are you integral? Are you vulnerable? And then you're like, okay, I can trust you. And then when you show that, but there are people you meet, like pastors, like people trust me all the time, and I was like, uh, why? Right, like you know, I tell people in the church on the service all the time. Don't just trust what I say. Go oh, check at, it out. Yeah. I am not saying that I don't have a characteristic of those who should be trusted. I'm just saying, don't just give trust to people just like um like just like mm. you swipe your credit card. <laughs> you know, Dennis likes to swipe his credit cards. <laughs> Rich people, poor people don't have credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so, don't like, have one. I, don't have, I don't even have a wallet. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, like, people, so trust is not, so mm. it, it is some people are just giving trust yeah. away, like, like, it is like a, a candy in on a, on a parade, you know, just throwing the candy out to everybody. It's like, no, I, I mean, uh, do, should I, do, 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 am I saying that you shouldn't be someone who trusts other people? No, I, I, you must, but there must be some steps into yeah. you don't don't just go and right arms right open to someone and give it all to someone who is a gossiper i mean then you get hurt and then you blame the person for gossiping i'm thinking like no you knew that person was a gossiper <laughs> you trust that person with that information that's your fault not my not that person's fault you knew that person was weak and then you went there and you share information private information about you and that person can't help it because that's her and she was she you knew that you trusted her though so well, how you, uh, <coughs> you mean you, me you're gonna give me a hundred bucks what i'm gonna do with it my shoes like i'm gonna find a way <laughs> of buying shoes so you know unless you specific specifically say sam this is going to go for your food I'll be like shoes, right? <laughs> so are you gonna trust me with your finance? No, you you will not. You know, so yeah. so so how do you work? So how do you? Uh, so let's let, let's let's flip the narrative then. Let's say okay, how do you rebuild trust then? If you're saying if you're saying that that's the thing, right? Because a lot of people might be listening, might be in that situation where you know it's that's not my character, but I made a bad decision. Right? I did. Sure. I, I want to change, right? So how do you go about that? Because that's what we're talking about, right? rebuilding those relationships how do you be intentional about those maybe you were you know just take taking advantage of people because you were a user and abuser B back in the day <coughs> or whatever yeah, yeah and, you, and you know and and, and what I, there's this quote that i always hear um per, sometimes perspect uh, people's perception is their reality of yeah, you yeah. right mm -hmm. so like if people have a perception that you're a uh, an untrustworthy person, mm -hmm. then that that just beca that is their reality of you. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you can't change, right? Perception is reality. Like, how do you? If we're saying that the world says that, but we're knowing like we have a God who can transform us. Sure, and yeah. Make us take takes us from our worst state, and He said, "I can remold you and make you to this person." Like, how do we navigate those scenarios if we're in those relationships where we need to have some? trust being rebuilt and i kind of know a few things that we can apply but curious to hear your thoughts yeah i'll say i say, i'll say the first thing I'll, I'll say is consistency in providing a safe place and a secure place for that individual whatever in whatever context that might be mm -hmm. um because when you are when you you provide them this consistency that brings safety to them and brings like the security it makes them feel confident in you 
Now, now they know you have some things that aren't all right, but but your consistency in showing those characteristics we were just talking about, reliability, honesty, integrity, and vulnerability, you start to create this, this security blanket, this stability that, that an individual needs. I think one of the, the things that makes us lose, our, people lose trust on us or stop taking, taking the trust away from us is because we are so... So that's for me the next t- tap is communicate well. So yeah. like we don't communicate well, what we're doing, what we saying we're not open, we're not transparent. They, they, what they see becomes a perception, and then. But I think if you are consistent, consistent with your action, and you provide a safety and a stability, and you communicate well, that we, you know, enhancing your communication skills to towards that person to let them know, be vulnerable. Hey, this is what's going on in my heart. This is going on in my mind. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm saying. Why I'm saying the, what I'm saying. When you do those things, I think it promotes respect. Does that make sense? I'm trying to say or not? Yeah, really? no, I, I I definitely hear what you're saying. I think that's the that's what I was gonna say too. Consistency over time, right? Because sure. you can't be consistent in a week. No, no, <laughs> no, no. And, I, and the consistency does never work yeah. in a one week. Yeah. So you have to be consistent over time. And and there's a Bible verse that kind of highlights what we're talking about. There's maybe more on the character side of it. It's in Proverbs, right? And we know Proverbs has a lot of wisdom and, and mm-hmm. also um, things in there. Proverbs chapter three, verses three and four says, "Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Mm. Right. Uh, bind them around your neck, and then mm. you will, will favor. Then you will win favor and a good name. Mm. Right. So yeah. That comes that comes back to this idea of like that's your character, right? And that verse talks about like you gotta you gotta hang your hat on be, on being loving and being faithful. Consistency. Right? Consistency. And let that let that be the anchor for you because then that will bring you the good name. Like I think I think a lot of times we go about wanting to to if we've broken trust. Like now I'm mm-hmm. in a situation where I've lost trust because I've I've done some things and, like, and we want that right away. We want it back right away. Like I've got to put on these two things that the Bible tells me about being faithful and being loving. Yeah. And over time, hopefully you see the consistency in that. Because mm-hmm. here's the one thing that we don't control. And I think we want to control this if you're sitting in the seat of a person who's broken trust. Mm-hmm. Is we want to be the dictator of how long that takes to get back. Sh- like, no. w- w- like, what do you mean? Like, it's what do you mean you don't trust me anymore? It's been like a week. It's been like two weeks. But yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 you said that. It, you said that you were you used the same word the husband one time used in my uh, office uh, back in Jacksonville. Uh, he made some mistakes on his marriage, and he was fixing, and he was fixing. He, 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 yeah. he was, uh, but it was just a month into it. <laughs> And she was still not trusting him. She was like, mm-mm, we're not, mm-mm, not, no. that's not happening. And he, so they were in my office because he asked for a meeting because they're like, I have been consistent for a month. <laughs> and then she turned to him and said, but you have been unfaithful for four years. Oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> Oh, so, no. so then I, th- I, I looked at him and I said, I think she has a point. And I said, if it took four if it took four years for you to completely break her trust, I would expect that you would take another the next four years into building it. If she's important to you, if this relationship is important to you, it took you four years to destroy, I would take yeah. you at the least maybe another longer. four years yeah, to get it back. Yeah. But you know, and so that's that's why I was, you know, this 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 idea of, you know, when we come to a relationship. You have to rebuild trust if you want to have deeper connection, sure. deeper emotional connection. You have to work through that. So, you know, the, my encouragement to like, you know, yes, you know, people, we don't give we don't give the license to people right away. But, you know, I think like we think about like I think of our relationship with God. Right. Like, you know, like over time we, we are we're all sinners. Right. Some days we're some days we're, we sin less mm-hmm. than other days. Right. Does that mean that God doesn't trust us? Does that mean that God doesn't love us? He still loves us. Yeah, yeah. He's praying that we we are we do better. Like when we say do better, it's not He's keeping a tally. Like, hey, today you committed ten oh, sins. Oh, so yeah. Here's the ten and stars today, you, you know got today. No, it's about the heart, and I think I think that's one of the biggest things that we can't measure. Right? Is 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 the 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 the, the heart and what the character of people like you know. Over time, when you when you said that thing, like you know, like anybody could do something good for a month, I you put your mind if your mind to it, right? Yeah, it's over time is when you start, you know, true colors start to be seen, yeah. right? and that's where true change will, will be evident. Like if yeah. you are truly changed, truly wanting to be 
um, to be a trustworthy person, to, to help build trust, to help restore this relationship, I think over time, you'll commit to that no matter how long it takes. And I think that's the, th that's the problem of relationships. It, let's, let's look in a romantic relationship for a second. I mean, you start dating a girl, <laughs> a girl starts dating you, nobody's telling them the truth. You meet a representative. Uh, that is <laughs> you met my representative, that, that, and I met your that, representative. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and that's not a, a unhealthy thing. That, uh, well, you're that protecting I, yourself. I'm just saying, sense. like, you don't know that person completely. And then you get married. And then things start to, to deteriorate because you start to get to know that individual in a different level. 23 years into the marriage. Was where Laura and I we are at. We know exactly who we are. She knows exactly what who I am, how I will behave in specific situations. She's call, she calls a little out before I ever did it. Why? Because there is a consistency on your on who you are being displayed before that person for 23 years, right? You, you know. So there so there are areas that I'm sure she trust me and there are areas that I'm sure she does not trust me because my lack of consistency of good character in the area has led her to say yeah no we're not doing that right uh, so uh, so I think that you know relationships only thrive when the the needle to of trust is high in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, because then you're going to be questioning every single time what that person is doing, how that person is doing, the motivation of that person, so on and so forth. And I would say this, one of the biggest problem, one of the biggest way we have seen trust destroy relationship is because we cannot find conflict resolutions for the problems that we have. Uh, and I think that's the, that the, for me, that is the beginning of the destruction of relationships is when we, because we have always going to have, conflicts yeah it's how do you move past that and how do you it's still not end up to the point where like it's completely broken yeah like, it's inevitable that you're gonna yeah. get in a scuff up <clears throat> with your wife with your kids with your oh, boss yeah. with your friends with your podcaster you know like it is it, is inevitable it, that's not the problem the problem is that we'll trust uh, gives you the ground to be able to bring healing and to bring the solution that is needed so i think how we approach this agreement how we find resolution uh, from the confrontation or the, conf the, the conflict that we have is only enabled when you have trust. A and, I think, and I think that's a problem in the 21st century. Yeah, so like, you know, that's, that's great stuff with, with trust. With, with trust is a key, a key ingredient when it comes to our relationship because it's probably, to your point, it's like it is the indicator, right? of if it's a relationship that's going south or a relationship that's on fertile ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's a key thing for us to lean in on. Um, but the idea about how do we how do we work when we think of like our schedules and how do we think about the relationships that are important to us and how we invest in those. I think it's easy for us when, when someone breaks that trust with us from those ones, we're like, well, you're done. Like, I, that's one less relationship I gotta invest in, one less relationship I gotta think about. But that's not what that's not how God calls us to live, right? No, he yeah. He calls us to, to live in, in harmony and in unity. And um, if there are relationships in our lives and a relationship in, that is that is strained, mm -hmm. um, there is an underlying um, thing that we need to kind of evaluate and think about how do we how do we restore those? Maybe not to the point where we're gonna be best friends or whatever, but mm -hmm. God called us to reconcile. In fact, he reconciled our relationship with him because it was broken. Mm -hmm. And um, he gives us that model. Now, we can't do what God does. We don't have the power, but we have the ability within us, right? Yeah, and, and I think, so, you know, w what we're trying to get to here is how can we, how to bring balance to everything that's thrown to us yeah. and then in lieu of our relationships. Yeah. And, and the, the, I think Jesus did a few things that I think would help us. I don't know if it's so. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm well, just well. flying by the seat of my <laughs> pants here, okay? That's how we do, I, right? I, I, think, I think Jesus, he prioritized few relationships. I mean, I think when you go throughout the gospel, you see Jesus prioritizing his relationship with the disciples, right? And, and people have, so I'm not just inventing new things. People have seen, you have knows this, that you have a small circle that people that you trust, a little bigger circle, a little bigger circle. People say, psychologists say that you can only know 150 people. Um, and then, so 
and then the 100 people is the pool of people you have within your horizon and then you can only know 50 names uh, and then you can only know like 25 people uh, intimately knowing who their parents are, her brother, sister, their kids and so on and so forth. And then the circle goes down. There is a metric somewhere in Google you can look to be the capacity of relationship we have. So like we can't know the whole entire world. Like the 2000 friends you have on Facebook, Danny, they're not your friends. <laughs> so <laughs> well, like no, what, what you're talking about is like you can't have like a 10 feet relationship, deep relationship with everyone. No. No. Right. So you have to prioritize th those who you are. And I think Jesus modeled that to us. He, he really prioritized that, those relationships. And so we must prioritize our relationships. Uh, and I think that's a problem there because Christians have a trouble prioritizing things. So let me give you the, the solution here. You prioritize, if you want to prioritize your relationships, and I'm serious about this one, the one that matters the most is God. The one that comes <coughs> second is your wife. The one that comes third is your kids. Then you can, then you're free to roam the way you want after that. But uh, you have to prioritize those three in their order because God is primary, women secondary, and the kids are three, or whatever the word is, right? You uh, So prioritize. And then you need to set clear boundaries. And I think Jesus set clear boundary between his ministry and his friends, right? Like he and, and the relationship he had, he he had so he uh, he w was always setting boundaries. Like his ministry was to people, uh, like to the demon possessed, to the kid who is dying, the dad who is. But he always prioritized. He always went back to the twelve. Mm -hmm. He always invested, taught, spent time with the twelve. He prayed for the twelve. So that's that's his. So he created boundaries, even though there was times where he was taught and reaching people and so on and so forth. He uh, preaching and ministering to people. He still came back to that boundaries. Like this is the twelve in which yeah. who I trust, <coughs> who I entrust to do to do something for me, which is for me is the next aspect of it. It is entrusting, delegating the responsibilities uh, to people that you are close to. So, like you, you know, uh, we we talk about uh, we don't do this very well at home. But like there are some responsibilities that need to be spiced up between the family, the family members. Why? Because they all get buy in what's going on. Yeah, you have to have skin in the game. You have to have thing. And one of the things you were saying that made me think about this, and I don't know if I if I'll be able to illustrate it or maybe bring it out the way I'm thinking it, is um, in those relationships, you have to also recognize that you're not the primary point, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So like like Jesus knew, and this is from a leadership standpoint, he knew how to lead. From the back, mm -hmm. he knew how to lead from the middle, and he knew how to lead from the front. Yeah. So when I think about that and try to apply it to relationships, we have to know, like, hey, and we that we have to have intentionality with it, but it also has to be a reciprocal thing too, as well, mm -hmm. right? Knowing when you know to push the relationship, knowing when to be at the back, knowing when to kind of be in the middle of it. I think that's, that's wisdom. <laughs> yeah. So I think, like, I I think about that, and I was like, you know, because. What happens when you feel like you're always at the front? You feel like you're the only one in this, and this oh, person yeah. is not in And it. you forget about what is behind you, though. <laughs> Most of us do. <laughs> True. But, like, you know, I think that's what, and that's what you're kind of talking about. I think Jesus kind of modeled that very well. You saw those times that you're talking about when he's up front, and he is like, hey, this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, okay, how are you going to do it? Like, oh, he sends the, them. He he's sends like, them. you he go. Goes, or, yeah, he goes. Oh, well, there's people praying in your name. He's just like, well, yeah, yeah. that's that's right. That, that happens out there. I understand that. Exactly. But you, what are you but heard about it? Oh, yeah. should have said the word maybe. So like you know, so you know, it's not like it's not like um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I completely and, and agree with you. And then I think one other thing that Jesus did that helped him on this journey of cultivating good relationship by managing his life well was. He he uh, practiced self care. Yeah, the guy was always going to the mountain in the wilderness to pray. Yeah, so I did this illustration on Sunday with the teens, mm -hmm. right? Talking about um, the idea of, of God's love for us and how we're to love others, right? And um, I, the illustration was to take a take a cup and just to put it in a bowl, and then you take this big giant jug of water, and you you show like. Um, how um you know you can't give what you don't have. Oh. 
What? It fell. It fell. It broke. Well, just too weird. I'm fucking with you. Yeah. Oh, great. But like, no. Oh, I think it's broke. I didn't do anything. I just I went to move it and it, it popped. stuff feel bad i don't think i broke it but <laughs> sorry danny i forget what i was saying <coughs> <coughs> the youth there is an oh yeah i was uh so like you talk about self-care right this mm -hmm. idea of like you gotta you gotta prioritize personal time so on sunday we were doing this lesson on how god loves us and how how when god marks us he seals us and all these different things but then there ought to be some things that you do too as well to show that if you if you're marked by God then how you love others should be seen that way. Mm -hmm. And I just did a quick illustration to help the kids kind of see it. And I took a cup and I put it in a bowl and I say, hey, this cup represents you, and this 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 jug of water represents God's love. Mm -hmm. And you cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I kept pour, started pouring the water and I said, if now as we pour the water, we fill ourselves up, learning about how much God loves us. How much he how much he cares for us things like that and god's love is boundless there's no end to his love and then we get to the top we don't stop we just yeah. we keep pouring god's love in us and mm. guess what happens it overflows and mm. it touches everything around yeah, us that's cool and this idea of like you know you cannot give from what you don't have yeah right so you this idea of personally investing in, in your relationship and mm -hmm. how you see that then you can give to the other relationships around you if you don't have peace in your relationship with God, how are you going to offer and extend peace to a relationship you have with your spouse? So That's things right. Like that. And you talked about that on the faithfulness and, and goodness sermon. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, I think, uh, and so when it comes to life, life is going to throw us, uh, throw all kinds of stuff at us, right? Uh, if it is soccer schedules, volleyball schedules, work schedule, church activities, extracurricular activity, hobbies, whatever they might be. I mean, I think uh, what, what we're trying to get to here is that there is a way of living that you prioritize few things uh, and then you push some other things to the back. And if if time allows or if the family perceives to be something that is good, if you and the spouse perceive that something that is good, you pursue that together, right? And, and I think uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us, and I think this verse, I, I, is chapter 3 verse 1, is short, not profound, but at the same time so profound. For everything there is a season. <laughs> and a time for every matter under the earth. Un under heaven, I mean. A time for every matter under heaven. There will be times of business. There will be time of prioritizing. There will be time of uh, delegation. There will be time of sharing responsibility. There will be time of, of, of uh, practice uh, of self-care. And, uh, and all of that should align with what God has for us in our families. And I don't think... Um, Ball schedules are God uh, primary goal for a for a family. I think the dinner time, the dinner table, mm -hmm. where people are having face to face time, having a conversation, prioritizing that relationship. I think that's more what Jesus envisioned, God envisioned for a family to function than parents, which is my which is my, my life. Parents with kids in a car running everywhere to all kinds of activities. And then stopping at a pizza shop, getting a pizza, taking home, eating fast, putting everybody to bed, you go to bed, you do it again next day. Rinse and repeat, man. Yeah. There's only 25 hours in a day. God hasn't made it yet with his 26. <laughs> <laughs> we would love for it, right? 25 <laughs> hours in a day? <laughs> what the heck? I don't know that math. I just have but 24 on mine. I said 24. Mm, did you? <clears throat> okay, we'll, yeah. we'll listen it back. <laughs> and but you're right. And there is no... There is no um, Time, that's another thing we never talked about here is the importance of time in prioritizing things in our lives, creating, you know, in, in, this, uh, in this what we were talking about, how to balance, bring this balance to our life. Like we haven't talked about that because we, we are so, uh, 
we we don't we take time for granted. We don't we didn't even talk about time. Well, you know, like so, you know, um, there's a there's this idea like you know we we all put our schedules together. Like, you have a schedule, I have a schedule. Mm -hmm. Like we already know, like so you already know today, tomorrow, what pockets of time you have free, right? You do, yeah. Right. I would say ninety percent of people operates that way. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that how God designed us for to operate? To know how much time I have, <coughs> you have. I mean, to 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 think like. I mean, I can. I mean, Laura and I sync our calendar every Sunday. Every Sunday evening, uh, we sync calendar yeah. because of what's going on. And yeah. you know me; I'm not very organized individual. So not only Laura has it, you have it, Jen has it, a lot of people has it, and they're all trying to keep me. <laughs> uh, you know, Makes a village uh, in text. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, so, so like, I think it is good that I, I don't know. I'm maybe walking to your trap here, but I think it is good that we see in advance what is going on there, so you can then use the rest of the time that uh, that you have you yeah, wisely. Right. I'm not saying that I do, right? But I'm no. just or people does. I'm just saying I think it could be a, a, a useful tool in order to help us realize. Oh, you know what? On Tuesday, I have about three hours that I can take a nap or can read a book or can hang out with a specific friend or whatever. Well, it comes back to the intentionality part of it, right? Like if you don't know how you're scheduled mm -hmm. out, things like that. I mean, saying that we're putting on schedule doesn't put us, doesn't supersede us for God's plan in our life, right? Mm -hmm. I think there, there are times and moments where we need to recognize, like, listen, this is not important, this is, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. think about the story of Martha. We, we all beat up on Martha in the story, sure. here, right? Um, how, you know, but that story, uh, it, it highlights the importance of, balancing work and mm -hmm. relational connection right sure, yeah, um, yeah you know martha's busyness led her to miss out on the most important aspect that she could have gained that day which was sitting out in the front of her savior she wasn't doing nothing sinful no no nothing she wrong. was doing a good thing right? she was she doing a good thing yeah but so the, the, if you don't prioritize well yeah exactly it's it's uh but it's essential to recognize and, and recognize that you know these tasks even though they're good to get done, should not precede our relationships. That's right. You know, it should not set precedent to say, hey, you know what? I want to get this done. Like, like I'll give you an example. We were we were talking about this podcast we did with Dan Rogop a couple a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he said he said something uh, that really stuck with me. Uh, at the end of the day, I went home and I, I actually I saw myself doing it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I love to kind of like, I don't like the house being dirty, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we got home and... Um, uh, I forget what it was. Zachariah was doing something, and instead of going and sitting and doing it, I was focused on emptying the dishwasher because I wanted to get the dishwasher empty so that way when he went to bed, I wasn't working on the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. So then I realized, like, oh, man, I just he just talked about this. Is the dishes really important right now, or is going out there with your kid and, and, get, and being silly with your kid is important, right? And he had gotten a new toy that day, and it was a dishwasher, so... I, I went out. I literally stopped on the dishwasher, went mm -hmm. out, and I sat down, and I watched him just wash the dishes, bring the stuff. No, the dishes didn't go, his dishes, but the dishes in the house didn't go away. It yeah. still got done, yeah. but no one died from it. That's right. You know, uh, but, like, that moment I had was, is like, he probably won't remember it, but I'm like, it's making small decisions like that over time. That will help us change it, change the perspective and how we see our time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel where society has driven us to be so task oriented, to get things done, to kind of hedge, snowplow mm -hmm. things because we mm -hmm. don't know what's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be more um, conscious of those times and take advantage of those. Like I said, I was really convicted about that. I remember him saying in the podcast, I was like, I'm doing exactly that. And I'm a hypocrite because I'm sitting here. Thinking about it, I was like, what do I do? So, And I think that's <coughs> one, of, one of the things that uh, Carrie also mentioned. I don't know if it was in the podcast or in the conversation I had with her, is that we have prioritized tasks or relationship, which is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I think, I think you're right. I think we, you know what, we, 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 we prioritize, we prioritize status as yeah. families yeah. over relationships. Uh, we prioritize financial gain and financial prosperity. Uh, so you, you're right. You're right. We prior our priorities uh, is wrong, and I think we need to go back and focus. Does working 80 hours a week to get extra money uh, worthwhile what you're losing at home? 
that's that's a that's a valid question. You know, that's it's a valid question because you know you got to count the cost, right? Mm-hmm. And, and some of us are willing to give that up, but in the end, does it really matter? No, if is, the, it, the, is it is it so now we so this is a this is a thing where my wife and I try to think of things and we don't do it all the time. Having an eternal mindset is hard yeah. to have on all the time. Sure. Right? Because you you can play that game with everything and you can justify whatever. So it's kind of unfair to do that. But I do think there are times when you have to think about, you know, having an eternal mindset about things like, is this gonna matter eternally? Mm. Or is this gonna be something that well I just wanna have it now so that it's done. Um so it's but something then I wrestle. Then said that we c- there's only one thing we take to heaven. With us. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. There's only one thing you can take is your kids. Right? Their so kids. Well, well, you're supposed to take your wife too. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> ah. so, but that, but that's people. That's the only thing you can take with you. That's the only yeah. thing you're gonna get. Uh, I mean, the car, the money, the bed, the sixty hours. It's, you're not taking. Yeah, and and the Bible teaches us all these things fade away, right? Mm-hmm. It's like it's 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 a it's a momentary passing and. You know, I think that uh, we get so caught up in that. Like one of my favorite um, uh, authors and, and uh, communicators, Tony Evans, he used to always say, like, you know, in some people, this is the only heaven they'll experience, mm. right? Um, you know, so that's sad. It is. Uh, this world is the only heaven you'll experience yeah, because you've, you've spent so much time focused on it that you've failed to recognize the true calling that God has for your life, and He has a lot more for us. So mm-hmm. I think um, that's something that stuck with me now do we get it right all the time nope uh no we don't but the hope is that as we think about relationships we're trying to be more intentional those words keep coming back intentionality Mm -hmm. about how we spend our time because it is limited the what Mm -hmm. we have you know where we invest our resources um to your point earlier how many invest how we can't be friends with everyone we can't have those deep calls. So what are the relationship God has called us to? And it could be a season, right? What we're in. Mm-hmm. There are those ones that we shouldn't forego, which is our family, if you're married, uh, things like that, with your kids. I think those are things that are non-negotiable uh, because that's the season of life you're in. And I think those relationships need to be invested in because they hold impacts for the future as well. Because just like everything we talked about, like our hope and our prayer throughout this whole study, how this whole series is to help us recognize our relationships and our connections to people and how we can kind of stop some things that we kind of started wrong, in a sense, mm-hmm. right? If we've started to parent in a, in a way that is not healthy, how do we change that so that impacts the next generation? Mm-hmm. You know, how we think about trauma, how do we deal with learn about trauma from Jen that mm-hmm. we carry it in our bones and mm-hmm. how we're gonna mm-hmm. how we're gonna deal with that so we don't, um, you know, have the future generation. So I think as people have been thinking back on this series, and I think we're coming to kind of land this plane here, yeah. um, is to recognize that relationships are complex. <laughs> mm-hmm. Relationships are um, hard, they're difficult, difficult, but in the end, it's worth it, right? Um, it's that human connection that we have. And we're relational beings. God created us to be relational. And, 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 and uh, one last, oh, well, I th- I'll say one last statement about this series is that we believe uh, that God provides guidance and wisdom to help us navigate those difficult moments, those struggles, those challenges that we all face in our relationships. So, and I think that's what we are trying as we're uh, wrapping up this podcast. I think that's what we are trying to remind people is that God does provide us the wisdom and the guidance to help us to navigate through all these problems. And we have forgotten those. We have let it go of those. And we try to say, hey, if you put the fruit of the Spirit back in your relationships, they will thrive. They will thrive. Self-control, balancing life is, is, is our application of how self-control is played out in someone's life. Mm-hmm. Right? <coughs> so um, uh, we believe that if we bring it back, put it back into our relationships, that is essential for us, which is the fruit of the Spirit. It will, yeah. it will play great dividends in the end. Yeah, and I've always looked at the fruit of the Spirit as, as nine additional character traits that that God is refining us through mm-hmm. that process of sanctification mm-hmm. to help us be more, sure. right? Can we, can we have all nine clicking at the same time? I'm sure that's a great way to be, but it's good to kind of assess, you know, how, how are you looking at things from a joy perspective? How are you looking at things? 
how are you patient? How, what's your patience level? Like, think about these things and, and see how, how you're measuring up with it. Mm. And then ask yourself, like, you know, man, if these are the areas in my life where I look at that and say, hey, these are nine characteristics that, that God sees in us, that the Holy Spirit helps us with, and we don't have these being, like, at least seeping through us, like, then there's some, there's some issues there, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and God wants to help us, but the Holy Spirit wants to help us in that area. Right, that's why they're called the fruits of the spirit. Mm-hmm, it's not mm-hmm. the fruits of Sam, mm-hmm. not the fruits no, of Danny. Yeah, it's yeah. a fruit of the spirit. And when we allow God to work in us and through us, then hopefully the evidence shows. Yeah. And and that's what we we'll hope is that that's what you say. We're bringing it back, fruits of the spirit. How can help us? Yeah, and um, I don't know. I think uh, <laughs> I think you did good. I think you finished this one up. I think we are. I think we we came to uh, somewhat of an ending here. Yeah, for yeah. Our I mean, like we said, it's not it's not the end. It's just like you know, we got we gotta we gotta put a bow on this this period here. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you know, when we think about our next series and things like that, we we hope that we're building on top of this, right? Mm-hmm. These are building blocks, as I said before. It's a foundational stuff, and uh, we got to get our foundation right. I think we're working on it. We're hoping to to do that. Yeah, and and we ought to remember that what Colossians three twenty three twenty four tells us, which is one of my the, those verses that my mom and dad taught me. Yeah, whatever you do, work wholeheartedly as if you're working for Jesus, for the Lord, because uh, uh, you'll be rewarded with the inheritance. Uh, so, um, because of your serving of Christ. So I think I think when it comes to relationships, our relationships is not to benefit us but we should leave that relationship in order to honor God and to love people and allow the reward and the inheritance from those actions blesses us and I think um, I think yeah I think relationship we have been using our relationships instead of uh, allow just serving people loving people caring for people and then allow that to take it to bring it back to you some of the things that uh that a relationship to ought to blast us with. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't have anything else, man. You said it well there. I think over the overall, the podcasts have been really good. We hope that you guys have have enjoyed spending time mm-hmm. with us yeah, as we talked so. and 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 that we change the format a little bit. But uh, hopefully, that worked too as well. So it's been kind of interesting seeing. Yeah, ourselves. it's been good. <laughs> I do gotta say, Nick has been doing a great job <laughs> spicing things up, and it, it looked really great. I, yeah, I had a lot of people compliment us for. Uh, for the video aspect of it, and and, um, and yeah. that's good. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you again. They say the video is great, the content's not so good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, that's the thing, right? Like, it's, it's uh, I, I know it seems like, it, you know, it's just you and I, but there's so many people that, that helps make this possible. You know, mm-hmm. Nick here, he's editing stuff, like, uh, every time. And, you know, we had so many great uh, guests this, this, this go around with, I just want to thank Dan Brogob, Kerry Hoover, yeah, and, gonna... and Jen Petticourt again for sharing their wisdom with yeah, us. Indeed. And um, you know, it's so it's it's not about you or I; it's about us together. That's right. That's and, right. And that's what we uh, that's what we hope and we aim that this series has been a blessing to everyone, and um, not just the podcast, the Bible studies, the sermons, and and even the song that the team put we'll together too as well. That's everything, a good song. everything that we we try to do is with intentionality, and we hope that you know you kind of assess your relationship from that standpoint too. Yeah, and hopefully because of all the consistency in our work uh, has been uh, allows people to give us, continue to give us trust so that we can continue to build on these relationships so that we all can be mature together and, yeah. and, and find that which God has for us so that we'll be partners in the kingdom yeah. as we trust each other. So, yeah. yeah. As we always say, be blessed. Have a good one. Thank you. <laughs>